All right, mate. What are your thoughts on the team list that dropped yesterday? Pretty exciting that we're finally here and the Eels get to play. Oh, it's so good, Jamie. We got a little bit of a taste. We got our two Vegas teams, lots of good stuff, lots of drama, and now we've got the rest of it. So there's a couple of real cheap guys who have popped up and a couple of guys who we we're expecting to be there that haven't. Pretty standard for your opening TLT. We just got to make sure that our team's ready because we've already got those Vegas players and our captain and vice captain locked in. So just make sure we got a little bit of flexibility for that round two. Yeah, definitely, mate. When you when you are looking at the cash cows, what what kind of guys stand out for you? You've got on the screen there, obviously the the hooking side of things. What are your thoughts on on Danny Levi? Yeah, um, I think for guys who didn't take cheese, I think you pretty much uh, are being pushed towards Levi because the Eels have named the double hookers after Brad Arthur said he wouldn't. So everyone who didn't get cheese is kind of scrambling to have a backup for like your Grant or your Robson or whoever. So I think you won't want to play him too often, but say for that Storm Brown 4 by, he'll do enough. He'll score maybe a 30 and make you some slow, unexciting cash, but he'll do the job. Yeah. How many how many Raiders players are going to grab? That's the big question. Mate, is there a, a world where you would just select, just say he's Robson or it's Grant, let's just say it's Grant with the round 4 by or Jeremy Marshall King. Is there a world where you can just purchase one of the hookers that are doing well in the first few rounds? to cover then rather than grab the cover from round one if you don't really want Levi? Um, I think you can, but it, it's a little bit risky and you're relying on something that you might not be able to have the cash for because, I mean, who are the cheap guys that we're having? We, we've we got Levi. We thought we had one of the Eels hookers. And then we've got all these sort of maybes in the sort of five to 600K bracket that sort of have a bit of question marks, like your littles, uh, even your cheeses and your... Crosslands, depending on when Brayley's back and Brayley himself and things like that. So I, I think you'd really have to see something real positive from one of them in order to just take them round by round three, round four. So I don't know if I'd want to rely on that and run the soul hooker gauntlet, but um, it, it's definitely a strategy, just not one I probably want to take for my team. Yeah, definitely, mate. Uh, in this mid cash cow section, I did forget to put Royce Hunt, who a few people... Um, have mentioned as well. It sounds like for Roycey that Hamlin Newelli will be back anywhere between sort of round two to six, NRL physio said. Is there any interest in him? Because a few people have asked. And then anyone else outside of Sam Hughes in this list that yeah, you wanted to throw your thoughts out on? Um, Not so much. I think Royce Hunt, he'll probably score better than his break even, but you've got a lot of, a lot of middle forwards on that Sharks team anyway. They've named... Finucane bench they've named I think all four of them were middle forward so yeah for your guys like McKinnis probably squeezes him but and we know that it's good minutes and I mean where does Royce Hunt fit into that it doesn't scream tons and tons of minutes when all of those guys are there together so I think he'll make like he'll be a couple points undervalued but not much like he might crawl up to 400k and sit there pretty awkward price hey so no one else in that list is a purchase for you Liam Henry is vaguely interesting. It, I, Mitch Kenny's not in the team at the moment and Summerton's starting Peach Bench. And you've got both, I think you've got both Eisenhuth and Henry there. So I'd be interested to see what happens when Kenny is back and how that moves around. And at 320k, although he does have a good PPM, it's not as certain as if it was just him or Eisenhuth winning the spot. Definitely. Guys, uh, for those of you that aren't uh, new here, welcome. And uh, don't know who Scoop is. He came 110th last year. I did beat him out by nine places. I'm very excited by that. But um, yeah, plenty of pedigree on the fantasy world. And um, yeah, you should definitely listen to him. And, and your pop popularity on this channel is growing, mate. So good stuff. Um, Chayman Salmon and Joey Chan and the Edges, mate. They're the, the two that have come available. They're both in your side at this point. You both are, but I think I'm going to take one out and uh, I'm going to drop a bit of hot news that I only found out about four minutes ago. Here we go. Um, Alec McDonald has been named lock in the New South in the Queensland Cup. So does that mean we get a late Bloor inclusion? Oh, to me, Bloor I think boy. we're going to get some switching around. How, okay. Yeah, right. If, if Bloor was to be benched and Joey's still starting and, and Bloor got a chance of playing obviously some edge then you'd say, and maybe some middle given he played a bit of middle at Tigers as well. If that was the case and Joey still started, 
is that worth just holding on for those that are still interested? If it ends up that Bloor does come into the team and he is on the bench, I would tentatively say yes to Chan just because he's so cheap and doesn't need to do a lot to get there. So as you said, he could play some edge and then move into the middle because I think that's where he was playing in the trials, right? He looked really, really good in the middle. Mm. So with a, a Nelson, a Sofa Solomona out for a bit, maybe he plays 20, 30 minutes edge. Um, Bloor comes on for most of it and then he moves into the middle for 20, 30 minutes. Um, yeah. That could that's still a good pathway to get make you lots of money if you're two hundred and sixty one k. Just watch out and make sure that the late switch still looks viable. Mm. Otherwise, you might end up getting a bit trapped if he does move to the bench and only play say thirty minutes. Yeah, okay, that's very interesting news. Thanks for that, mate. Thanks for ruining all our hopes and dreams. Given there's basically <laughs> no cash cows, the halves, mate. Uh, the Hutchison Flanagan debate. Is there room for both? Which one are you siding with if it's one? Give us the thoughts there. I currently have Hutchison in my team because just because he's the seven is going to have the ball in his hands a bit more than I think Flanagan will. Like we we've all heard we've all heard oh Flanagan's going to take a big role this year. Ben Hunt's going to sit back and take it. But I mean, we still didn't see a lot of that in trials. And Hutchison does a bit more tackling than Flanagan. So he it just doesn't take too much else to make Hutchison a decent amount better than Flanagan, whereas Flanagan needs probably a, a lot more share than we've seen in order to be to be viable because you've got Ben Hunt taking the majority of both the attack and the kicking. So, yeah, I don't mind Flanagan. He's cheap enough that you can he'll still probably make you good money. I can see him knocking out about a 30 average or maybe a bit more. And I mean, if he surprises us, he could be the better moneymaker out of the two. But I think Hutchison will still outscore him. Definitely, mate. Um, how'd you end up on Sunday, by the way? Which players did you end up taking to kick off Vegas? I went a little conservative. I only took four, I think. Yeah, I took four. Um, I missed Cheese. Um, I him. had Payne Haas. Yeah. Um, yeah Tupanua, who went off with the, just after he got a knock to the knee in the 43rd minute. And I mean, everybody had Piakura, right? Like mm. zero points for somebody that's like, oh, basically one of the only must haves. That's the joys of fantasy. And then uh, Ben Jaroyevich, starting center. How good. Awesome. 50 points from a basement guy. Yeah. So plenty of flexibility coming into this week, mate. Once um get through these cashies, I'll ask for the cashies that you've got in your current side. If that's okay. Uh, but uh, centers, mate, we got Strange, Chris, Russell, Kotrick, Barry. Give us your thoughts on sort of the, the these guys in here. Obviously, Strange, we're all going to have in our sides. Starting him, looping him, or benching him. Where do you, where do you sit with this one? What should people be doing? I reckon this is a pretty good debate, to be honest, because it depends where and if you have Burbo. A lot, like sixty percent of teams had Burbo. Mm. And if you played him on the bench, I think you probably do have to play strange in your centers, just starting center. If you didn't and, and you played Burbo in your starters, well, then there's debate as to do you put strange there or do you put like a, a decent scorer? Like Karaz has now got center duel. Do you move Karaz up there and bring in uh, like a Ponga or something if you had Lusik plus a few other guys you want to move around? So I think there is he'll score well enough that you can put him in your 17 if you want. But if you are carrying a Tigers player, I think he's a really good option to loop. Yeah, probably the way I'm going to play it, mate. Um, for those that did have him in, the, uh, sorry, did have Burbo in the loop slot, Seb Chris is a no-brainer, right? And and what are your kind of thoughts on Seb in general when he does come back and play next round? Yeah, it's it's a hard one because we want Chris to score a lot of tries. We want him to make more tackles than he was at fullback because he, he scores better at center than fullback a bit yeah. paradoxically. We just got to be like 99% sure that he does. And I mean, I'm pretty confident. I wasn't expecting Hopawadi to be center uh, for this yeah. round with Chris, uh, not Chris, uh, Kotrick wing. So I think one of, I think Kotrick might lose out here, to be honest. Hopawadi, I think might move back, but it's just a bit uncertain. Chris, He's cheap enough that he'll make some money in an awkward position with Jewel. And you can just see how he goes, to be honest. He only needs a couple of 
go over for a try or two and he's kicked his price rises along. But on the other side, he might just make some slow burn cash, not really make as much as you're hoping, but it makes some. So it's a way to get money elsewhere into your squad and fix up some problems if you've had some Vegas, some Vegas troubles. Yeah, that's where I see it. Under 400k, it helps with those uh, those things for sure. Sean Russell, Kotrick, do you see the the Kotrick love, or, or is it kind of a, a big worry with with Seb being back next week? I don't like taking Kotrick when I'm not confident if Ben Travojevic is going to be there fully confident, I mean, next round. And then you've got like your other guys who have maybe a little bit of question mark. I don't. I just don't want too many guys with question marks because if they all go wrong, I'm going to be max trading for two or three weeks just to put out <laughs> fires. That's for sure. Um, you're an Eels man. Any love for Shawnee Russell? He did look improved in the trial to my eye. Yeah, he looked quick, hey. He's um one of those guys who's a, a pretty powerful try scorer. I think he scored like in his debut game, he was like a hat trick before half time and then got injured or something. So I think there is potential for him to score some tries, but on the other hand, he really needs them. So his mm. average um on the wing for the Eels with the 60% try scoring rate is 28.6. And a lot of that came from last year. And that's pretty much where he's priced. So you'd probably want him to make really good use of this early Eels run. I see him pretty much like a Chris, but like three or four points more expensive. So I'd rather probably just take Chris at this point. Yeah, okay. I think Chris could score a bit better. I just based on the, the center stats we've got from him, hey? Yeah, I think Chris just has a little bit more base. And yeah. if he scores a couple of tries, the upside's bigger as well. Yeah. Any Berry love or is he one we just let leave with the other options? Oh, uh, I really haven't considered him that much just because I've been going for those either fringe keepers who could move into good keepers or the cheap guys like your Carazas, your Penasinis and your Owen Aitken before, well, he wasn't even named. So uh, I haven't looked too much into your guys like Berry, but he did have a couple of uh, injury affected games last year. Um, you just take those out and his average goes up by like three or four. And then, I mean, you've got your you've got the Roger effect and you've got all this stuff happening at the Warriors. If he continues to improve, he could be as much as as much value as Chris. Don't know if it'll be 10 points, but he could have some decent value. I'm not personally um convinced enough because it needs a lot to mm. go right in order for it to work. Definitely, mate. And the wing fullback cash cows to finish off. There's some interesting ones in there with Keeney and Tulpiki kind of having some, uh, you know, a bit of a worry on their role, but both could score really well. And then Bostock looks improved to my eye as well, similar to that of Sean Russell. But does he get a little bit more ball or does he, you know, a little bit cheaper than that of Russell, which is helpful. And then Xavier Savage on the wing, which he played last year in, in New South Wales Cup. How do you see all of these guys looking? It's kind of funny because... A lot of these guys I haven't considered much, but I've recognized that they could be like the guy that I just don't notice that they've made a hundred K and then suddenly after four weeks ago, oh wow, why didn't I consider them? Right. So you you do have to have a look at them. Your Keeney and Tuapiki are very interesting because they're both guys who've got like about a two, three week time frame <laughs> with heavy debates and rumors and question marks over how many weeks they're going to get yeah to a peak a bit less so but i mean even so there's a couple of rumors swirling around it's like oh it might be worse and he might not be back keeney at the cheaper price probably is the is the go out of these four given we just got that titans official update the other day of fafita and him four to round four to six you'd think that locks in minimum two and then um he's only just started training as well so yeah who if two's the bottom and he gets three four um, even if they push it back further and five, he's made heaps of money because we know he's a good scorer. That's probably the thing, hey, that just makes it a little bit better to pick. Obviously, that you, you're you looking at someone that can score well, so it's good for your starting 17. I think if you are taking Keeney, guys, you are playing him. I don't see the point in holding him on the bench as much because you can go a little bit cheaper, but same with Tuapiki. You're starting them, you're playing them, and... uh yeah, that gives them that extra bit of grace. If they weren't such a good backup, then as coach, you're like, oh, I could just keep keep our boy out for 
sorry, bring them back in probably a little bit too quick. And then if they're good, like these guys go, you can hold them back a little bit further for sure. Uh, Boss stock at 314, obviously a little bit cheaper than that of, of to a biggie. Any love for him there or is it just a little bit too much? Those wing scores when he's not storing, scoring tries really do scare me a bit. Mm. He is improved, as you said, but when he has had four games and three of them were in the teens, it doesn't make me super duper confident. Yes. So if he is a bit improved and he can get a good combination with uh, new on that left side, yeah, he could um, make a couple of quick boom scores, make his money and then just be sold on. But yeah, if he knocks out a few stinkers to begin the year, you might wonder why you didn't go for like a, like your Keeney or somebody instead. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then any love for Savage or the other guy, other three ahead of him, would you say, in your order? Yeah, probably uh, them ahead of him. I'm not as keen on the wing. I think his base probably isn't as high as I want it to be because yep. even, even at fullback, he didn't have a massive base. Mm. He can run real fast. Tackle break, although Sean Russell did catch him in the trials, which was interesting. <laughs> so Sean is yeah, the gun, he, mate. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It, he's 350k and nearly the most expensive out of those, and one that I have probably the least confidence. So I'd, I'll just go for the other three over him. Awesome, mate. And uh yeah, just some thoughts. Oh, sorry, what uh what cashies do you have? Under three hundred K. What do you got in your side at the moment, if you don't mind? Under three hundred K. Let's have a look. Uh currently I have uh, Burbo locked in already, already played. I've got Chan for now. We'll see how that goes. Keeney, Salmon, Hughes, Strange, and Danny Levi. So I think that's seven. Wow, that's plenty. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, so I'm tr- figuring out what I want to do for that last wing fullback spot, whether I chuck like a Ponga and really go cheap um, elsewhere or whether I put like a Rapner or a new. I, I keep coming back to new, but he just seems so... It just seems like a really, really bad gut feel type thing. So I'll probably just go for something else. Look, you might not be too far off the money. I, I'm personally not on him, but I, I went through him in that video today and he um he definitely got some value Um, and there's a bunch of people on him. So there's a few people in your in your thought pro- thought process for sure, mate. All right, uh, Hooker, you don't have cheese. So you're looking to go um, Levi and then are you on one of these four? Yep, on one of these four. Currently got Grant sitting there. He just cool. he just looked so good in trials, and the others just didn't look as good. I think yeah. the gap could be pretty big this year. Um, Cook looked all right. Um, he played already, scored sixty, but he mm. did also require like a a, a try assist, a try save, and like a turnover to get there. Yeah. So I still think Grant is going to be your top option this year, okay. and I mean Robson could average low to mid fifties because he's done that before, he's scored better than that. But I just think the cows look like they're going to just give the ball to Drinky and let him distribute it. Mm. So I am worried about how much Robson is going to do. Makes sense. Uh, is that the order you'd have it in? Grant, Robson, Marshall, King, Coruscant, or would you change any of that? I'd probably say yes. If I was more confident in Coruscant playing 80 and I could see the teams right now, I would possibly adjust that. But mm. yeah, I mean... Coruscant is another year older. You've got Galvin banging down the door to get yes. in, in the halves. Yes. And so they might stick him at 14 and give him a couple minutes off the bench. So goal kicking is good, but we really need 80 minutes from Coruscant before you can get him. You need him with um, You need to have Brandon, don't you, to take, yeah. to take Coruscant too. Um, all righty, mate. So you've got Grant and Levi. Awesome. Midguns, are you, so you have Haas. Are you looking to take any other of these Mid guns, and is this how you would rank them as well? And give us a bit of a, a spiel on, on them. If you're going to sort of go pure points, I would probably rank them roughly in that order. Jack DeBellin, maybe up, down, depending on what happens, and Toby Harris, maybe depending on how well his knee holds up. Mm. Yeah. Um, overall, if you've already got an expensive dude, which I imagine you would, either Haas or Murray or both, even. Yep goes a lot of money for somebody that does have a buy before origin and is just going to sit there and pretty much score 60 to 70 every single week i did a i did a breakdown uh, a couple of weeks ago in a, in a in a group chat where i had a look at the boom versus bust scores of yo versus haas and although they average pretty much exactly the same i think uh haas 
scored between 50 and 75 or 75, like only 12 out of 21, had a couple of like low 50s and high 40s, but then a couple of 80s and 90s. Yep. Whereas Yo, I think he had like, 18 out of 21 between that 55 <laughs> to 70 mark, which is insane consistency. Yeah. So if you want consistency, he's your guy. Awesome. I just don't know if I want to take him personally when I've got the others already. What was your take on the McInnes um, Sharks bench setup? Do you, do you see him sort of getting over the 50 minutes? Now this is starter. Get, I think he'll get over 50. I don't know if he'll get 60 though. I yeah. probably have him bang on the middle about that 55 and scoring about that 55. Mm-hmm. So he'll he'll have a few points of value just because he's a gun and he's starting at lock. I do worry though, is that a great choice for your team, uh, your team balance, unless you've gone cheap otherwise, because he locks up, what, about 700K, isn't it? Yeah, 704 or something, yeah. Yeah, 704. So he's a 51 break even. And if you're expecting him to average 55, cool, it's a few points value. But I mean, it's only like it's only like four or five. Mm. And then you've really hurt yourself trying to strengthen like your centers and your wing fullbacks or even like a, a gun hooker. So personally, unless you've already gone light, I'm not the hugest fan, but he will be he will be good. Is is he a guy that you can look at in in round one and two and kind of see like Look, if he's going to get 45 minutes or 50 minutes in 13 and then he, he actually is spelling Braley, then you go, oh, wow, like he's going to be a 60 average guy, whatever, and you can get him in then. Is that how you, you'd probably play it? That's probably a good way to look at it. Um, If you're worried about exactly how many minutes he's playing, he's already 700K. He's not going to get away. He, yeah. There's a lot of middles there. He's not going to play 70 minutes and average 68 and all of a sudden he's disappeared and you can't buy him. He's not going to do that. He's not in that role. He's not that kind of player. Mm. I think it is a good option to just see. And if he does get more than 60 minutes or 60 minutes, like reasonably regularly, mm-hmm. yeah, then you can grab him and he'll be sort of like a like a, a budget version of Horse and DeBellin last year. <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah, the, the mids, is, it's very interesting. As we always see, like we're all kind of, pushing towards it now in this second team list is looking at the McInnes's. Like I'm looking at Toggle Harris and I think he's an absolutely incredible buy to kick things off. But if you already have a, um, a Murray, a Haas, it can make it tough, mate. Your thoughts on, on Toho to kick, to kick things off. Uh, not one I've considered lots just because I don't like his taped up knees. Hopefully <laughs> the off season that he's uh, done all right. But yeah, I mean, you've got your, Warriors pack changing up a little bit. You've got Mitch Barnett back in after he missed a lot of last year. You've got Kurt Capewell in the second row now. New Corey's um, not in the team. He's out with like a strain or something for a couple of weeks, isn't he? Fracture, like foot fracture. So oh, that's right. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's sort of about a month. Him. Be a bit, bit annoying. So yeah. there's you got Freddie Lussick on the bench who's probably going to spell Egan, do something like that. You've got Dylan Walker who can be halves cover or just straight play in the middle. So look, to be honest, there's a couple of ways to you can get good minutes. But I mean, what is the translation of good minutes? Do you want him to get 65, 70? Do you need him to get 80? I don't know if I'd trust him to get 80 minutes, but mm. I mean, he'll score you good points anyway because he's Tohu Harris. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, DeBellin, mate. Any more worries on him? And then Tarpany as well. Obviously, you had him last year. Yeah. DeBellin, I think new coach, new players. Hame Sele still to come back from injury. I just think there's too many things and too many question marks at his price. So I'd probably I'd probably not go for him. There's a chance that he could top the scoring out of this list other than Yo, but there's also the chance that he could average high 40s and just not be good. Yep. Taps. Tarpany. Guys, uh, that's three years in a row that I think he scored 70 or 80 in the All-Stars match and been amazing. And then Ricky Stewart says, congratulations, you can play 46 minutes instead of 45 minutes this week. So like mid-season when you've got possibly Horsburg going to origin this year um, and stuff like that, he's probably a go mid-season to late season. Mm. Uh, a bit like Tino, to be honest. He usually starts slow and then really wrecks it at um, Rex opposition in the at the back end of the year. So not somebody I'd want to go for straight up because I mean, I remember getting 
low 50s, a 60, and then being disappointed by a 37 type of a thing. Yeah. Disgusting. And then he had a and then he had a, his child. So there you go. Mate, we'll go through your um the the mid value and then the edge, and then we'll get your um your mids and your edges in your squad, please. Uh the value guys, Cotter, Elliot, Curran, and Flegler. Do you think they're the kind of, only kind of mid value guys you should be looking at? Uh it's it's hard to add Smithies confidently, but there is a chance that he could be really good. I don't have confidence in Ricky Stewart is the main thing. I've got him down so, here as well, sorry, in the yeah. as a jewel. Yeah, that's fair. So I think Cotter is just going to be the safest one. You've mm-hmm. got uh poor old Hess blowing his ACL. You've got Leilua leaving. You've got um basically him being the captain now, and he just had a really good eye test in the trial. So I mean Cotter looks at his um ownership to be a really easy buy. Yeah. Just stick in. Might not be the craziest value, but he'll be enough and he's high enough owned that it won't hurt you if it goes not as well as you'd hoped. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and then Elliot, similar price, obviously. You'd have Cotter ahead of him just as a safer option, right? Yeah, um, especially on the eye test. Elliot yeah. in the past has really only done the really big scores once or twice. And I mean, he could just be that guy who averages mid to high forties throughout his career. But yeah, I mean, the bench looks pretty good for him. Hey, you've got Cogger there, yeah. and you've got Kai Pierce Paul there. So you'd have to think some of the middles get some really good minutes, and that could help Elliot. Barry Tui was uh, said on Twitter the other day in response to someone's like, "Oh, is Elliot going to get eighty? He's like, "No, he's not going to eighty. These guys will spell him." But like, still, you'd expect he'll get decent minutes at least. Yeah, I think Barry said fifty-five uh, mid fifties would be the play. Um, Karen Flegler, any love for them at all? Flegler, I quite, I don't mind. Yep. Because you, you've got your big minute leader gone now with Gilbert and really who's going to be that guy that's going to be that 50, 55, 60 minute middle on the park that's going to give the experience and just the power to that pack. I think that has to be Flegler or they'll just not do it at all. So I see minimum 50 minutes for him. Um, That could be some decent value. If he gets 55 minutes, I'd probably put him level or just behind what we had to toll him um, back in preseason. So I I think there's a good chance he has like seven, eight, nine points of value. Don't know if it's heaps and heaps, but I mean, there is some solid upside there. What's a toller, hey? Yeah. There you go. (laughs) Uh, The edge, mates. Hopgood. Do you have love for him? Like I see a few people starting with him. Is that a good pick in your eyes? I, He's like Yo, to be honest. I saw the Eels bench and I was like, hang on, they've blinking got a bench hooker and Tuolagi there. Tuolagi can play middle, but I mean, we saw what was happening in trials as well. Might not happen for too long. But I mean, initially, Fresh Hop could get really good minutes, knock out some really good points. Problem is, he's already priced at like 60 points. So Ooh, yeah. I think he's kind of a guy that I would really love to jump on for like a, a head-to-head team or if I somehow didn't have Haas or Murray at all. Hmm. Um, because, we'll I mean, that, I he think. could knock out some really good stuff, but I mean, then he's got Origin and Eels buys about nine or 10 or something, mm-hmm. I think. So, I mean, there's a couple of negatives as well besides his price. I do I do like the potential for his scoring and his minutes though with, uh, with that Eels bench setup. Yeah, you'd, just, you'd imagine he hits, at least hits his break even there. Eli Katoa, Preston, and Frizzell, I've got in that sort of guns category. I think they'll all do really well. Katoa probably having the most value. Do you agree with that? Yeah, Katoa. Um, he's that guy that just you can feel him stepping up to a 50 average this year or even a low 50s average. Last year, he had plenty of games where uh, he got a head knock or got injured or went off early. And... Uh, if you look at his actual minutes for the year, he only averaged 67.7. So if you turn him into an 80 minute back rower, you filter that and he turns into 50.9 average. Mm, That's probably a bit where I'd expect. And I mean, he didn't score a try basically for the first three months and then went on an absolute spree. So if the storm do well this year, he, I don't want to say he can be anything, but he could do really well. All right, Guru. Um, Preston and Frizzell, nothing too much to say other than they should hit about what they're priced at. Yeah, Frizzell um, just needs to not get head knocks and then he'll be like 
two points of value above his average. But I mean, he'll he's that type of guy. He'll go off for a knock once or twice a year. Definitely. Uh, Smithies, mate, you did mention him. We've got Hosking as well, along with uh, with Lukey there in this edge value. It's it's pretty stacked now, isn't it? With with uh, Whitehead being injured, hey. Yeah, it's a funny one. I you've got Whitehead coming into his last year at the club, and he's got a calf injury, I think. So, and they're notorious for lingering. So, yeah. what if Hosking instead of three weeks gets six weeks or like five weeks? He's already ex- more expensive than he was last year. He's like nearly 600K. But I mean, we saw how he can score at both the Broncos and the Panthers. Mm. If he plays 80 all the time, it's a, a lock for 50 plus average. Yep. Pretty simple. Hey, he's definitely someone that's looking, I'm looking at him in my side. Smithies, I haven't thought about too much apart from the fact that I feel like I'm personally thinking of just going for Grant only. At this point, and then if I was to go Smithies, I'm I have Hosking over him right now. But if I was to go Smithies or Hosking, they can both be a stepping stone to a hooker in like a round three or four to cover for me. Um, what are your thoughts on Smithies in general? Do you think that it could be worth starting with him and then seeing what happens in a round three or four when when Horsburgh comes back because he has that work ethic that's absolutely perfect for fantasy, hey? Yeah, it's interesting. Like the initial comparisons were to someone like Victor Radley, but I mean, when we got to trials, we saw nah, he's he's really a tackle bot. Yeah. So the stats are going to be there. Um, it's just what happens after that. I can definitely see some really good scores for those first few weeks. It's just how does it work with Josh Papali'i and Horsburgh? Does Papali'i go back to the bench Mm. in his like is winding down his career? Um does he get good minutes, especially if Elliot Whitehead and Hosking do some funny switcheroos throughout the year? Yeah. There's there's a chance for him to make a really good role for himself, but there is uncertainty. I know there's uh, some groups that are, are actually quite interested in him, but I mean, outside of that, I have barely seen him talked about at all. So he'd be an interesting one to watch. Yeah, it'd be nice if he was in the 400s, hey, at 520, it's a little bit awkward for sure. Uh, Luke, you made, obviously, it looks like with Fine Fiaki on the bench, we're likely to see 60 to 65 minutes. Does that worry you at all with what we saw in the trials and, and a bit of last year? Nope. I mean, we've seen Luki's scoring potential. We've yep. seen him score 80 points in 60 minutes. He's just that kind of guy. Mm. He, he's not necessarily going to play 80 or we expect him to play 80 much. Because we got like your Finifiriaki on the bench. And so I'd say like a 45 average in 60 minutes is pretty realistic. But I mean, if he whacks out a really good score early on, he could make his money in like three weeks. And then you just mm. sell him on if he hits a, hits a low one. So That's yeah, right. I think there's really good opportunity. He scored 41 in that trial off like 53 minutes or something. And like he was contained by Strange early on. So no I mean, attack. It just, it just looks good. Yeah. Awesome, mate. So your mids and edge in your side, can you run through them for us? Uh, mids and edge. I hit Tupanua and Piakura, unfortunately. Yep. I've got Cotter as well and Lukey, as I've just said. Mm-hmm. And then I've got some of those cheapy guys uh, like your Chans and all that uh, sitting on my bench. With Haas there. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Easy as. Salmon. Salmon was part of that, did you say? Yes, yeah, Salmon's there. Awesome. Uh, the half guns is a pretty self-explanatory. Are you looking at Fogs? Thoughts on Moses? Got about, what, five and a half minutes to get through the rest? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cleary, just take him, just buy him, slap the C on him or half for this week if you're worried about anything else. Mm-hmm. Just the best option. Just safe, just going to be good, just is Cleary. Fogarty, yeah, good. I, I'm i happy with there being that solid safe upside. If you're in the Discord, you've probably seen Phil's breakdown of why he's a why you look for value in somebody like a Fogarty with your goals and your extra kicking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the worry is, will the Raiders fall back a bit this year and he'll lose some attack and stuff? But yeah, so there is a worry and you might go to Moses instead who you know that yields are pretty decent and Moses is very dominant and just looked really good in that trial and his combination with Panasini was amazing. So Moses, I think, is definitely going to outscore Fogarty by a fair bit, but mm-hmm. he's also a bit more expensive. So yeah. I'm, I wouldn't be against having either in your team to be honest sj awesome. feels like he's just at his exact like i don't think he can go higher than that so you might he might match it but i mean there's no upside and there's a bit of downside so i'd probably lean 
either towards Moses or Fogarty or Hines. If you think with some of these cheap guys popping up, maybe the Cleary Hines strat is back on. I don't know. Hey, I haven't got it, but I mean, who knows? There you go. So what, um, what halves do you have made at the moment? Cleary end? Cleary Fog and then okay. Hacho on the bench. I think awesome. I've got Thank Flanagan you. as well, but I might shift him around. I'm not convinced. Oh, I like it. I like it. All right. Centers, mate. Uh, what uh, gun center do you think is the best to select? Uh, is it Penasini? Would you go up to a Holmes or a Tongue or something like that? Or, or is that a no with the Karazas and stuff around? Now that we've got our Karazas and our Penasinis and e- even some of the guys who are just a little bit behind that, like your news and stuff, I just don't think you quite need it anymore. So oh. I, I like Penasini. Scores uh, like four points better with Moses in the team. Eels look really good, really good in trials. Just, yeah, pick a good center, whether it's Karaz or Penasini or something to partner with your cheapies. Have you gone Karaz over Penasini at the moment? Uh, I got both at the moment, actually. Ooh, Karaz, is go. Acting, Karaz is acting as one of those wing fullback guys who are going to cover for all those annoying early buys. Yeah, awesome. I love that. Uh, for people that are looking at taking Ponga, are you, is it all, all full steam ahead for them? If you, want a, if you want an expensive guy, he's the guy. Full steam ahead. Goals, massive attack, look great in trials, just... Yeah, if the Knights slide a bit, he's still going to be there trying to pull them up by the scruff of the neck. Beautiful. Sully, mate, no issues with people taking him at 450 over Tessie? No, I, I saw a really good comment the other day, which I hadn't stopped to think about. Last year, uh, Amone didn't give him great ball. Um, Flanagan did give him real good ball in the trial. Mm. So he's strong, possibly getting good ball. Maybe up, maybe he averages up to 40. Beautiful. Uh, and Tessie, mate, you, you're obviously liking him. What's the big thing that's standing out for you with Tessie? Uh, just those those two games at the end of last year at Centre, a couple of really good scores without a try. So yeah. good run meters, good tackles, uh, good tackle busts. Not something we'd expected from him when we saw him at the Broncos on like the wing or fullback. But I mean, good draw. Maybe he's a go. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, the yeah, that's the thing. The draw is really nice for them. Just around three by, but outside of that, it's really really good matchups. Uh, any love for sort of Taylor May or a Roger? If you wanted to go up a little bit more. Roger, yes. Talon May, not after a year off. Uh, ACLs, like you get your full performance back mostly in your second year back. Roger's a gut feel. He looked like a, mm. uh, he wants to be a roaming Manu and we we love Roger and we saw what he did in trials. He carved. So if you want to go him, he's fine. He's good. Gut feel yeah. pick more than a stats pick. Legendary. Minute 40 left. Hammer, any thoughts on him? Is he similar to those two? He's sort of like Kenny Scorewell for draw. Um, I also saw an article that he wants, he's been studying drink water to sort of emulate his game a bit more. Um, and we saw Drinky have a million assists last year. I think Hammer had like five. So, I mean, if he bumps yeah. up his assists, good scores, good times. But, I mean, we'll have to see it first. I'll probably buy him after the buy if that happens. Rapana, do you trust Ricky Stewart? Yeah. <laughs> his, his fullback scores are good. Does yeah. he stay there for a long time? Um, Karaz, his base and his sort of like his uh power statistics like his offloads and tackle breaks huge for a backline player it's just he had that sort of back problem uh coming into this year when we were hoping is fully fit mm. bit dodgy but i mean it's good enough for me to take him and i mean papanaz and papanaz we've seen him average yeah. 50 in the past he's huge he's great lost goals but i mean I might get him back so awesome yeah just buy. that's good and your centers and wing fullbacks mate to finish it off 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, Burbo, <laughs> Penasini, Karaz, Rapana currently, and Heaney, I think. Okay. And any uh, any cover? Uh, I think so. can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Thanks for that, Legend. I, yeah, I really appreciate that. And I hope you all of you guys enjoy Scoop's thoughts and have a cracking round one, guys. Woohoo.